Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back again with another um, video. I just want to do a quick um, lesson on the mark of the beast and, um, you know, just kind of get some thoughts out with what I see going on in the world and how quickly this rollout is happening and all that kind of stuff. And so a couple of good things I would say is that, um, you know, it's not going to take long for us to know, you know, whether the Bible is true. This is a very, very exciting thing. And uh, Mark Sargent also said that recently. And I took a clip of that and put that on my channel. And so it's it's no, you know, it's understood for people who are spiritual and lending their ear even slightly slightly to the Bible that um, it's not going to take long, you know, for whatever doctrine anybody has, even if it's they don't care about the Bible, for that to be um, validated and that kind of thing. And so that's exciting. But I want to talk uh, about Revelation 13 in particular and what we see going on with coronavirus and Operation Warp Speed and all that. And so... Just uh, food for thought, you know, and I'm sure people, generally speaking, the people that come by here are flat earthers, and so they don't need any more examples of how evil the government is. But um, just to get into the specifics about um, the Bible and, um, you know, the mark of the beast, Revelation 13, 16 reads, and he causeth all. Causeth is an important word that um, is Bible prophecy. You know, just understand that's part of the prophecy as well. It can never be, quote unquote, forced. And so... You know, and I post videos regularly of how that is the appears to be the strategy with uh, Corolla. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And so I just went into the blue letter and I want to look at right hand and just um, get an understanding on that. It's Strong's G1118. Strong's G, 1188, Dexios. Sorry. Dexios. Sorry, 1188. So I just uh, clicked on that. That's a term that's used for right hand. And um, the, the definition is the right side or in the feminine at hand as that which usually takes. So it's the, quote, strong side. And so it's it can be either right hand or right side. And um, we know that because it's also used elsewhere when, um, you know, Christ is talking about his left and his right hand side. And so if you go down, uh, I'll put the links below for this uh, definition. It's uh, used in Matthew 529 to describe the right eye, the right hand um, in Matthew 530, the right cheek, um, right hand, um, again, hand, uh, right hand. Um, <clears throat> and in Mark six fifteen, sitting on the right side, um, Luke one eleven, right side, right hand, right hand, right ear, right hand, right hand, right ear, right side, uh, and so on. And so you can see that it's it refers to like the strong side, the cold righteous side. Uh, when it's used in the case of Christ, for example, talking about, you know, his left and his right hand side. And so it's not always a literal hand is what I'm trying to say. And um, what it, it's used regularly throughout the Bible. And so um, just know that. And so that's that's important. And so for people out there, I don't need to piece this together for you, but um, just know that. And so that's what's going on. And um the actual definition, the right or the right hand. And then, like I said, it's a place of honor or authority. And so um, that's that's what it is. And so anything that fulfills this verse where it's caused and then it's put something into the body on the right side uh, in order to buy and sell, that's the mark of the beast. And so just be aware of that. And so there are people taking it, you know, literally right now and have been taking it. And so just be aware of that. And so the thing that I want people to know is that um, for me personally, I'm never going to take anything, anything in my body um, at all. And so it doesn't matter whether it's related to this or whatever. Um, so just to, doesn't affect me personally, but just for anybody out there who's wondering um, whether what's going on now is or it isn't. <clears throat> It's, it has the ability to fulfill Bible prophecy, very much so. And so uh, the only thing missing then is um, you know, in needing an order to buy and sell. And so we don't have that quite yet, but I'm assuming that will 
change, you know, in the next coming months. And so, um, to me, the mask is enough to, to know that we, we shouldn't be doing it. That for me personally was a concession to even, um, be a part of that even slightly. And so, um, if I had a full-time job that required me to wear a mask, I, it's over, you know, it's just whatever money I had left. And so, um, I would just walk out, you know, <laughs> that day that they instituted that, or I wouldn't even take it seriously. And so I guess, um, for other people out there, I know that it's very, very scary, but I can just tell you what I'm doing. I'm not going to go and like teach something and then, you know, not follow that rule. Like in my own life, I'm hopefully very upfront, uh, about my own life and my plans. And I have enough savings to get me through again, if, the cost of living stays the same and that may change according to the bible quickly as well but through all of next year or so um that's my plan and so i'm not trying to throw other people under <laughs> under a bus or anything i know that this is very scary for a lot of people especially if you have a family i can't even imagine uh, the thoughts that would be going through my head but uh you know just uh, hopefully people know i'm i'm walking the walk or planning to walk the walk or stop walking the walk i guess um soon so that's what it is. And so, you know, I don't really argue with people. I, you know, I don't really talk to, I probably only interact with like less than a handful of people regularly and it's all golf related. So this stuff rarely comes up and that kind of thing. But it looks like for me personally in my own life, I'm going to have to start letting people know, you know, I can't say I'm, I'm a CPA and just doing whatever, you know, just with my time, make up kind of like stories or just not really, you know, just avoid the question and all that kind of stuff. Whenever people ask me what I do, I just say I'm a CPA. And then I just, I work for my father. <laughs> that's what I say. And so it just kind of stops at that. And so hopefully that's literally true, but um, that's my quote unquote story. And so I'll have to kind of unpack that a little bit more. And I don't want people to be around me um, if they don't feel comfortable knowing that I'm never going to take it and I could be a potential quote unquote carrier or whatever. So I don't want to be that guy either. And so it's now it's like real life, you know, for me and the people around me. So if I claim to care about other people and I'm like kind of not clear with them about what my plans are related to this uh, Corolla vaccine, then that's not safe, you know, and that's not honorable or biblical. And, and I don't want to hide anymore because now it looks like this thing is for real, for real, you know, like it's not going to slow down. And I didn't really need this month to know that, but, you know, it's very, very clear the amount of money they're spending and all that kind of stuff. Like it's not a pump fake, so to speak. And so, you know, I'm, I'm letting people know, you know, or I'm going to in the next little while that, um, you know, we can still hang out and stuff, but I am under no, under no circumstances. Will I, I take it. And, um, I just want people to know that. And then even if it costs my life, that's, uh, completely fine. And, um, I didn't really have a life anyway. <laughs> and so this is death here. So it's not a big sacrifice for me personally. Again, I know other people have other responsibilities, but all I can talk about is my own life um, and what I'm planning on doing. So that's what it is. And so to me, the, the people who are the microchip people and all that kind of stuff, which I am, I leave that open, but I don't even think it's necessary at this point. It's like, okay, let's say the people who take this BNT 16 2B2666 vaccine in numerology, um, let's say they take that then what's the point of the mark of the beast, mark of the beast afterwards? Like it's the same people that are going to take it. It's not like some people will, will refuse the vax and then take the mark of the beast or like a microchip or something. So it, it makes sense why people like end times teacher and all these people are tight lipped about that prophecy. And that's the only thing that God gave them, but it turns out now it looks like that's not true either. And so uh, they really are adding no value at all, except for um, just being prophets and actors, I guess, like on the streets, false prophets. And so, um, really the flat earth and then Rob Skiba's prediction is pretty much it. And so these quote unquote Edomites, I guess, are running circles around the Hebrew Israelites, which is not surprising. And one of the groups, ISUPK, apparently the, the leader is telling people just to go take it <laughs> if they want to and stuff like that. So, uh, it's very, very obvious that they're all part of the government and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, again, it's, it's a wait and see. I, I don't really need to see much more personally and I don't care um that's kind of the point of this lesson i don't care what it is at this point um the earth broadly speaking is completely unlivable for anybody who has an opinion <laughs> let's just put, forget about like the bible and all that kind of stuff just for anybody who has like an opinion and so uh i've seen plenty uh to know that my days on this earth are numbered and i'm happy about that <clears throat> and the, re the another reason why it actually technically doesn't matter um what it is whether it's 
the vaccine plus a chip or just the chip or combination of the two or whatever it is. Um, because the cool thing about it for people who understand the sequence that I teach, the two witnesses are going to be administering the plagues in Revelation 16. And guess what the very, very first plague is? Revelation 16, I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And that's very, very important uh, language because we're told in um, 1 Thessalonians, I'll get this first. Um, 1 Thessalonians 3.13, to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. Sorry, that is not the one that I wanted. Uh, that's a good one, though. That says that um, Christ is going to return with his saints. And so that's related to actually the verse that I wanted because um, it's uh, this one uh, lets us know that um, God's saints are not appointed unto wrath. First Thessalonians 5, 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so salvation and um, avoiding wrath is the same thing. And then it's salvation by Jesus Christ, of course. And so there's a group on this earth that when we see them taken away, we'll know that those are the saints and we'll know by who they are, the quality of the people taken away, that, um, that those are the saints. And then we know that immediately after that, this will begin, Revelation 16, because this is the wrath of God. And so um, that's the only way that Revelation 16 can ever be fulfilled. And no one teaches that, but it's just obvious. And so it's only, I guess, for certain people in the know. And so the only way a person will know when this will start is when uh, God's elect are taken away because they're not appointed unto these plagues. And so the very, very first plague, not a, not a shocker that God's elect would not need to be here because look at the first <laughs> the first thing relates to the mark of the beast. So like, like they're going to be around for that. Verse two, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped, worshiped his image. Why didn't it say, why does it say and upon them which worshiped, worshiped his image? It could be together. You know, we know when you do and, if you draw Venn diagrams, they could have a, commonality and intersection but it could also be two different groups of people if you say i want ketchup and mustard it's not the same thing <laughs> you know it's like two different things and so um just know that and so that this is very very important as well because it's people that actually have a mark the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image so it's everybody on god's left hand side and so um just know that and so god is going to identify those people on his left hand side with this noisome and grievous sore and so it's already determined you know it's not like somebody's lobbying to get the mark of the beast or worship the image they're already predetermined you know there's groups of people again in the truth community most of the truth community are filled with satanists you know and they ultimately worship the image of the beast even if they don't know it and so when the god's elect are taken away they have a decision to make was that god or was that the government what do you trust and so if you trust that it was God, then you will know that these words are about to get fulfilled. And so, um, you know, then those are the people that I believe are part of the mixed multitude, you know, who will give up their life and refuse any other enslavement from the government. And so there's another group of people and truthers as well, who will be like, oh, those are aliens. And then they'll go and add to the numbers who have the mark of the beast. And so that's another, that's the final sifting that's going to happen during this, during this time in Revelation 16. And so 1260 days. And so just know that. And so, you know, people want to share things and all that. I'm not against that, but I'm just letting people know in my life, like, I'm not worried about like people taking it or not taking it, whatever it is at this point, because like, it's going to be needed to buy and sell. And so people just have to take it like right now, they just have to like, they're not going to say no and like wait or nurse can nurse can't say no and like work from home <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And like, no, just send me to another unit or something. I mean, it's a hospital. And so um, once you cover all the hospitals, you cover all the teachers, you cover all the quote essential worker. I mean, that's, that's a lot of people. And so that's why they're buying a lot of them because they know that there's a lot of people, you know, who will take it. And so just know that. And so that's the times that we're in. And so, you know, my, my prediction again of 2023 is absolutely insane. You know, it's absolutely outlandish. And so, um, it has to be, and it will be on the order of days, you know, without a doubt, if the Bible's true. And so, um, I'd be extremely surprised at this point if the Bible's not true. And then not only that, I know it's true, but <clears throat> that it doesn't manifest very, very soon. You know, again, just in lieu of what we have going on literally right in front of us. And um, they're not slowing down. I mean, they literally call the thing warp speed. <laughs> and so God's letting us know that it's close, you know, for sure. And so 
Revelation 16 cannot occur until God's saints are taken away. That's just literally these two verses um, prove that. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 and Revelation 16, 1. And so that's the wrath of God. And so that's the last judgments that God is going to pour out on the earth are in Revelation 16. And so this is the time here where Christ says in Matthew 24 is of great tribulation. The world has never seen this much calamity because think about what's happening here. Um, and you'll never get an understanding from anybody that I've seen at all tell you that this is being implemented by two men, you know, on the streets of America. And so <clears throat> um, never in human history has two men tormented the entire earth with these plagues that has affected all people and irritated all people. And so just know that. And so that's just the first one. And um, can you imagine how much that's going to um, stretch the medical system? <clears throat> and then the next one is uh, going to affect the water supply, you know, and then, you know, the list goes on. And then these two men have power over the sun and all that. And so, um, you know, again, all of this is God literally turning up the temperature and what I call a stress test, you know, on the earth. And so um, there's a group of people who I hope to be a part of that we don't want to be here right now, much less anything like that. You know, we know God exists through the flat stationary earth. And so um, absolutely not <laughs> do I want to be near, anywhere near this. And there's lots of people that would want that, not just 144,000. There's people even who are going to have these sores. You're probably like, what, what is this? You know, like they're not going to be excited. Hey, I got sores. This is awesome and stuff like that. So there's plenty of people <laughs> who are crying out to God. It's not funny, but like it's so obvious. So um, again, I know that why we're on the order of days because um, there's many, many people who are um, anxious and excited to not be here. You know, just not even religious people, even pre-Corolla, just how hard it is to find a job and keep one, much less all the other hoops that are set up now to jump through and stuff. So um, just know that. And so, you know, and all this like money printing and just giving away money and then $600 turns to $2,000 and all that kind of stuff. It's like insulting uh, and all that. So, I mean, the US dollar is just a complete joke now. They're just handing it out to people. And so once money, it's always been like this, well, money is literally given out and has no value, you know, effort behind it, then it's nothing, you know, and then it's just, a band-aid at best but I, it's insulting to even call two thousand dollars a band-aid because that doesn't cover anything you know for a family um at all and so <clears throat> that's literally going to do nothing and then it's two thousand dollars is completely nothing because it's like people have been struggling for months now and you just literally flick them a crumb and again it's not funny but like it's again puts god into an even he's already in the corner but even more constrained on the order of days because it's one thing if the government then stepped in and like gave people like some kind of an allowance where they could like actually live and then, I don't know, did enforce this and like, you know, gave you a way to live. Then I'll be like, OK, well, then maybe it, maybe it isn't on the order of days, you know, like this could kind of play out for a little while longer. But everything is literally pushing God into a more and more cramped space in this corner because the poor have been made very poor and now they're getting flicked a crumb. And like the poor on the streets, they don't have like an account, bank account, where like the government's sending the money. And so it puts God even doubly in a corner if he cares for the blind, the poor, and the lame, which he states that he does, you know, in Jeremiah 31, 8. And so it's uh, it's becoming very, very obvious to me that, um, you know, we're living in the very last of the last days. And, uh, you know, for people out there, um, you know, don't, uh, don't worry too much or at all, really. All these things are predetermined, you know, even for us personally. And so um, just because I refuse all this stuff doesn't mean that God and I are buddies. It's, I would do this anyway, even if the Bible didn't say anything and there was no Bible, I still wouldn't, <laughs> I still wouldn't do it because I don't like being told what to do. Um, certainly not by stupid people or evil people or anything like that, obviously not. And so it wouldn't even matter. And so this is the exciting thing for me personally. It's like a win-win. It's just making, uh, my time here, um, being on the order of days, just more and more obvious and clear that that's good. <laughs> and so, you know, be excited by that. And so, you know, that, uh, that will always be a place, uh, there'll always be a place for people like that here to be reminded that don't take anything seriously here <laughs> on this earth. Like the only thing I regret really in my life is just taking anything seriously. Like it's just so, so dumb. And we were forced to, we were subject to that. Uh, like the Bible says in, uh, I believe it's in Romans. This is an important verse. Romans 8, 20. 
For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subject the same in hope. And so just know that, you know, no normal person would be like, yeah, great. I'd love to be enslaved my whole life, lied to where I, where I am and not allowed to talk about God and worship God. No, no, no normal person would agree to that. And so just know that that's what the Bible says. And that's true. And that's obvious. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, just uh, take some amount of comfort in that and just know like me or anybody, we can't fake it. Like these sores are going to land on people just and it's already determined. And so it's not going to be any like guessing game or whatever. And so if people had any doubt what that event is when people are taken away, they're definitely not going to have any doubt when they see people with sores. You know, like, I mean, how much God can't make it any, any more obvious to a person that they're in the last days. And if you don't buy it at that point that God exists and we're in the last days, then enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy the lake of fire, I guess, if you make it to the end of the 1260 days. And then if you make it to quote unquote, make it to that, then you're just deleted according to the Bible. Body and soul are destroyed. And so enjoy it. Um, and so God's going to turn the temperature up and literally the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto scorched men with fire. And so uh, there's going to be, God is literally turning up the temperature. And then if a person doesn't get it um, at that point, and um, it says here, and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory. And so God's going to literally turn up the temperature and he's doing it to all of us. And then if we, any of us do not repent to give him glory, then they're programmed to not do that. And then they're going to experience the ultimate heat, which is um, hellfire, you know, and, and body and soul will be destroyed. And so if they're in America, they're going to be destroyed by the other nations sending missiles over. And then all the other nations were going to gather together and fight against God. And then it'll be God directly, you know, killing people. Like I read in First Thessalonians, he'll be returning with his angels and his elect for um, this quote, final battle. Uh, in the Middle East, you know, that's where it'll begin and then God will just clean everybody up And so just be like dead bodies lying everywhere <clears throat> And so if you quote-unquote make it um, <laughs> Like end times teacher and got your Dorito stash and you make it to the end of that time then you got that to look forward to and so You know, this is the cool thing. I would say like the Bible is going to speak very very soon And so 2023 is crazy. I don't plan on teaching the Bible after next year At all that's plenty of time and so um, you know, that's my quote unquote updated prediction. And so, you know, I, uh, we'll see, you know, very, very soon. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.